forefathers of those early South Americans couldn't have arrived through the ice-free corridor, then maybe they did come across the Pacific. That might explain one of the great mysteries of our human journey. The beautiful skull has been nicknamed Luzia. It belonged to a woman who was in her early 20s when she died, and it dates to around 13,000 years ago. But it's not just the date that I'm interested in. It's what she looks like. Anthropologist Walter Neves believes that he's uncovered a secret about Luzia. So if these early Americans look more like Australians and Melanesians, does that mean that they arrived here across the Pacific? No, no, no. Because uh, if you take into account the technology available like 12, 13,000 years ago, that would be impossible. Okay. But then how do you explain the fact that modern living Native Americans don't look like Luzia, mm -hmm. they do look like East Asians. Okay. That's very easy to explain, because if you go back to Asia around 14,000 years ago, the people that live today in Asia with their typical morphology, they were not there. Right. So you're saying that Luzia's people came into the Americas before the appearance of East Asian features. Definitely. This definitely. is absolutely not evidence for any sort of trans-Pacific crossing. Definitely not a process. Walter is adamant that Stone Age people could not have made it across the Pacific. He believes Luzia's ancestors did come from Asia, but before those classic East Asian features became common. Dr. Nevis has espoused the concept that ancient Asian plesiomorphic features came over from Asia before any so-called mongoloid look evolved in Asia itself. But as you will see in the next article in Portuguese, translated to English, Dr. Nevis now realizes those same features have remained in many Native Americans to this day. October 10, 2005. Survivors, skulls of extinct Indians of central Brazil indicate link with the first settlers of America. For some time now, supporters of the main theories about the arrival of man in America had to live with an uncomfortable gap. The idea that a people morphologically different from today's Indians were the first to colonize the continent. However, further analysis of the skulls of different tribes in Brazil suggests that the Paleo-Indians have been here until the 19th century, and they still have living representatives in the countryside. According to researchers at the University of Sao Paulo, it seems that the most typical representatives of the look of the first Americans are those called Batacudos. This idea is part of the master's thesis of biologist J. Paulo Atui. Dr. Atui has just defended his dissertation, supervised by bioanthropologist Walter Nervés. When the data obtained by Dr. Atui is consolidated to that of other natives who disappeared in the 16th century, the Paracu of the Mexican region of Baja California, it begins to look like modern Indians who supposedly belong only to the so-called mongoloid race were not homogeneous at all. The picture today clearly indicates the existence of two distinct morphologies also among recent Brazilian Indians. Since the Paleo-Indian morphology is reminiscent of the Africans and native Australians and Melanesians, this explains why Luciera became the symbol of those people and is often represented as black, although nobody can be sure about the color of her skin in real life. In his work, Dr. Atui began to explore if the separation was really that marked. The idea was to test the homogeneity of the Brazilian Indians and recent biological continuity between them and the Paleo-Indians. The recent tribes were compared with more than 80 skulls of Brazilian Paleo-Indians and representatives of people of East Asia such as Japanese and Chinese, Indians of Peru and North America and natives of Australia and Melanesia. These groups represent roughly two different morphologies. Several different types of measurements pointed to the same result. Batacudos clearly grouped with the Paleo-Indians when it comes to cranial features, while the Tupi of northern Brazil are much closer to the typical mongoloid. It seems that other tribes of the Macrogee linguistic group to which Batacudos belong follow the same morphology. In any case, the Batacudos are, for all intents and purposes, Paleo-Indians, said categorically Walter Nervous after the presentation of Dr. Atui to Sandro Bonato, a geneticist at the Pontifical Catholic University of Rio Grande do Sul, who attended the board responsible for assessing the work of Dr. Atui. The work begins to fill an important gap. We need more data on these recent populations, he says. 
Dr. Bernardo is one of the researchers using the DNA of today's Indians to try to reconstruct the peopling of America. For now, his research has not revealed genes that differ significantly between the various populations studied that could be attributed to the Paleo-Indians. For now, the Nambiquaras, a Mato Grosso tribe, that is non-J, also seems to have strong Paleo-Indian traits. The people of Lucia may not be extinct after all. People who obsess on race tend to look for any evidence that can categorize people along so-called racial lines. Unfortunately, with craniometric studies and facial reconstructions, many obsess on any comparison that might show facial affinities between some population of interest and whatever racial type the person actively identifies with. In this continent, there has been an obsession with claiming ancient Native Americans as everything on Earth except the ancestors of modern Native Americans. But as these studies have been showing, Native Americans are much more varied than most people think, and their facial features can encompass many different so-called racial types without being related to them. They are all still Native Americans and related to each other, not Old Worlders. You have Eurocentrics trying to claim Pendian woman, even though her reconstruction still shows her looking Native, just because she is dolichocephalic. They must have forgotten that at this time, ancient Europeans didn't look like modern Europeans either. Recently another of Richard Neeb's reconstructions has surfaced that is supposed to represent the first European. The face obviously doesn't look like a modern European. Yet Eurocentrics are harping on reconstructions of ancient Americans. By their logic, they do not descend from ancient Europeans either. Of course, anyone with some modicum of logic would have figured out that people change over time. Then you have Afrocentrics having a field day with this reconstruction, much like they did over the Lucia reconstruction. Now they claim people just like modern Africans were the first Europeans. Of course most genetic studies indicate this migration came from Asia. Asians have migrated from Africa for quite some time and were already adapting to their environment. This period is obviously way before any European type of light skin evolved, but light skin would still be possible to the extent that it was possible in Africa. So we might have had a person as light as a sand of South Africa. Or maybe like many populations in India. The soft tissue reconstructions are just speculations. We know they couldn't have been too dark if they were surviving in Europe, and we know they weren't as light as modern Europeans. But other than that, if they had curly hair or straight, thick lips, or thin, we really don't know. But we do know they were the ancestors of modern Europeans. Just like ancient Americans were the ancestors of modern Native Americans. Now I will post some of the earliest pictures of Native Americans to burst some of the other stereotypes of Native Americans that are out there. Black and white pictures were blue light sensitive only, and then only orthochromatic before they became panchromatic in the 1900s that means many pictures show reds and other colors much darker than they were, and show blues and other color as much lighter than they were.